Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be repairing my Atari 65 XE. As seen in a previous video, the keyboard wasn't fully working. So I've got a uh, part in and let's get this thing apart, get it fixed and enjoy some games. Stay tuned. Alright, so I've got my Atari 65 XE here. Well, let me go ahead and power it on. Um, I've got my joystick hooked up to it. This is a joystick from an Atari 2600, but as you can see, everything works just fine. So I can pick any game here. Let's go to Centipede. And we'll hit start. Come on. There we go. See, everything's working great here. So in terms of running games, everything's cool, no problems. Um, but the problem is, and I showed this on the video where I was doing my initial inspection of this, is that the keyboard doesn't work. So let me take the cartridge out. I've got the uh, Atari Max 8-bit flash cartridge. So we'll take that out. Now if I boot it up, We get the ready prompt, so if I type in A, B, C, it knows in D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Um, there's arrow keys. I think the arrow keys all work, but uh, you can see that there's a couple of columns. 3, E, D, C doesn't work. Uh, 0, P, and I think colon and slash work. Colon doesn't. Um, those might be the only keys that don't work. So with the Atari 65 XE, there was two different keyboards that shipped with it. Um, and the more rare one is the one with springs. So if I pop a key off of this, and as you can see, they're spring loaded. So apparently this is the rare of the two keyboards, but the easier keyboard to get parts for. And I have a part here from 8-bit classics. So this is the replacement membrane for the keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and we'll see if that fixes up these couple of columns that don't work or completely breaks it and makes things even worse. All right, so the first thing we're going to the first thing I'm going to do is unhook power, video and joystick. And then we can flip it over. And we have a couple of screws to take out here. Um, I've not taken apart an Atari 65 XE before, but can't imagine there is going to be too much to it. I can see the uh, top lid is already kind of separating, just taking those screws out. So maybe somebody's been in here before, didn't quite get it put back together, or maybe that's just how they are. I am not sure. That screw is stuck in there. And then I think we have two more screws in these two holes here. I'm not sure that I had that one out. Oh, I do. And a lot of these early systems use different size screws for the different areas, so I do want to keep those separate if they're different, but it looks like in this case they are the same size, so no worries there. I'll just get this last one out. There we go. So now I think if we flip it back over, this top should lift off. It does. I'll set that off to the side. So we've got the keyboard here, which should just fold away. And it looks like we've got a connector here for something that was not connected to anything. I'm not sure where that was supposed to go. And then we've got this super fragile ribbon cable here. These are the worst. So we'll very carefully take this out. Now I suspect our new membrane has a replacement ribbon cable with it. But we'll find out here shortly. 
So next step is to get the backing off here. And it looks like we've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty tiny little screws. Now these are all appearing to be the exact same length. Um, however, this one is silver. I don't think that matters where they go back in since they're the same size, but don't know if that's oxidation or just manufacturing differences, but definitely a difference. Alright, so we'll set this one off to the side and not reinstall it. Okay, so with that being done, I suspect we can just lift this off. Yes, we can. And here is the membrane. So I suspect we could clean this perhaps. Uh, sometimes these do get dirty and oxidized. Um, but as you can see from the bottom of the keyboard, you know, there's nothing on these keys really that would cause any sort of issue with particular columns. Sure, a single key could go bad. Um, they have uh, special ink, I think, that's electrically conductive that you can put on these to make them work again if they don't. But since it's a column, I'm really suspecting it's the membrane. So let's open up our new membrane from, uh, again, 8-Bit Classics. And let's hope it is the same. So far, so good. So it's saying Mitsumi, and this says Mitsumi. So probably this is going to be the correct replacement. And it does say open carefully. Yeah, we don't want to damage the membrane. Very gingerly slice this tape. All right, so here is our replacement. Now you want to avoid touching the conductive areas with your fingers because your fingers are greasy. And I would say this looks like, to me, an exact match. Everything looks like it lines up perfectly. So of course this one sitting in the tube is a little bent, but I think it'll unbend once we bolt it down. So let's take this old one out and install this new one in here. We want to line up the holes. Easier said than done. I think that looks like it's pretty good. And then we'll very carefully lay the keyboard down back on top of it. Oh, so this is a power LED. I don't know why it's not, well, it's not hooked up to anything. Okay. So I'm just looking in the holes and they look like they're lined up, all three of them. So that's good. So we'll flip it over carefully and I don't see any of the green membrane showing through any of the screw holes. So I think we're probably lined up okay. Now we can take the base and the fun part of reinstalling this ribbon connector. So this one is uh, bent a little curved from being rolled up in a tube, which makes it even more challenging. It's not straight. I think we can get it, hopefully.
not really any good place to put pressure on it to push it down. So just kind of grab it by the edges and feed it in and hope for the best. really hope we don't tear it. But okay, I think that is going to do it. This keyboard just sits like that. Uh, this LED is tucked underneath here and taped under this. Not sure where that was supposed to go, if it was an aftermarket thing. I'm not super familiar with the Atari 65XE, but there's an LED here. And there is spot for it in the top of the case, so I'm not sure why it's not hooked up to anything. That's okay though. So the top case should just slide right back down. So we're missing something here. Yeah, this isn't quite sitting flush. I think the ribbon cable is pushing up on it. Now the case should just sit back on the top. There we go, so flip it over. Reinstall these two screws first. And that should do it. So let's reconnect the power. Reconnect the video. And flip it on and see what happens. All right. And I do notice that the LED is lighting up, so I'm not sure <laughs> where that was plugged uh, into. Anyway, sets up the keyboard A, B, C, D, E, F, H. Yeah, looks like everything's working. So I think that's it. So if you have a 65XE and the keys aren't working, some of the keys, and you take a key off and you see a spring underneath, then you can definitely get replacement. That's the Mitsumi keyboard. Um, I forget what the other type of keyboard is, the more standard one, but I don't think it's as prone to failure. But uh, anyway, 8-Bit Classics uh, sells these Nice replacements. I got the power supply video cable and now the uh, membrane for the keyboard from them. Uh, everything they've made so far has been great, so I can't recommend them enough. But anyway, yeah, I think we're good to go. So let me pop my Atari Max cartridge back in. Plug my joystick back in. I will leave you with some Frogger. So, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Hope you're better at Frogger than I am. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.